Hey guys, it's Jade from Finko bringing you another video for the Creative Column series. In this video, I'm going to show you how to create a skewed gradient borders through a CSS based approach to your columns. And then we're going to apply what we have learned for the previous video we have covered, which is to add a hover effects to your columns. So without further ado, let's get into the builder and get started. So I have two columns in my setup which currently look lifeless. However, I have added the hover animation effect of these column elements, which we covered in a previous Creative Columns video. So let's quickly go over the current setup. I have set a class to the column, the icon, and the button elements. We need to do this so that we can easily reference them to the CSS codes we have. Then to have this animation effect, I have all these codes added in the content CSS. Again, if you want a more detailed explanation about this setup, please check the previous Creative Column video out. So our main goal for this video is to add life to these columns by further styling it through some of the available builder features and a bit more CSS codes. So first, let's start adding this splitting color effect in this column. And for that, we can add an upper background layer to this column. Then let's set the color to white, but lower its opacity to somewhere around 0.03. As what you can see, the background color covers the entire column. However, it is possible to make it cover just half of the column through custom CSS code. So let's do that. So this is the block of code that sets the width of the upper background color layer to 50% of the column. So we have the interactive column and we assign a class to it. And then the upper background color layer has the default CSS class. And then we add the width 50% to make it limited to cover half of the area of the column. And as easy as that, we're now able to add this splitting color effect to our column. We have another video in our channel that covers more details about the background layer tricks. So if you're interested in knowing more about it, please check those video out. Now let's start with the fun part, which is how to add a gradient border to the columns. Since the border option available in the builder is limited to only a color, we'll have to use some workaround for us to be able to have the gradient effect to our columns. To make this possible, we are going to add a bit more custom CSS and we'll make use of the before CSS pseudo element to implement this. We can add this directly to our column. So, interactive column before. then content. Then let's set the position of this pseudo element to absolute so we'll have a better control of its positioning. Let's also initially set the top and left value to zero. and the width and height to 100%. Then let's add a gradient effect through the CSS background property. If you are not familiar with the CSS background gradient codes, it's quite easy to find sites online that generate the codes that you can use. In my case, I'm gonna use this purpley gradient for my background. So currently, 
The pseudo element we have is contained into our column. The question now is, how do we make the pseudo element appear like a border for this column? The trick is actually quite simple. We just need to find a way to have the size of our pseudo elements few pixels larger than our column, then set its Z index to be lower than the columns of the background layers. But how do we do that? Uh, it's just a matter of adjusting the height and width of the pseudo element, then nudge its positioning through the top and left values. Thankfully, with CSS3, it's quite easy to do that by making use of calculations for the width and height values. So let's say for the value of width, it's calculate 100% plus how many pixels you want to increase it. And let's say it's 8 pixels. Let's copy the same thing to the height value. If we hover to our column area, you will see the dimension of our column. You could also see that our pseudo element is 8 pixels out the right area and 8 pixels out the lower area. What we have to do now is push the pseudo element upwards and to the left. The top value is currently set to 0, so to pull it up, we have to set a negative value to it, like negative 4 pixels. And also, to push it to the left, let's set a negative value as well, which is negative 4 pixel. Doing that gives us a 4 pixels extra space on the top and the bottom area, and at the same time, putting 4 pixel space to the left and right area. This will be our border later. Then, let's make sure that this pseudo element is positioned underneath the elements of this column. As what you can see, some of the text content is not visible. That is because the pseudo element is covering it. So, to make sure that the pseudo element is positioned underneath the elements of this column, we have to add a z-index property and set it to somewhere quite low. Let's try 0. That didn't work, so let's try to set it somewhere really low to be safe, around negative 5. There we go. We got all of the contents of this column back, including the split background that we added earlier. But this is still not it, because what's obviously happening now is the pseudo element that's supposed to be our border is now the background of our column. But there is a quick and simple solution to that. Do you have any guesses? If you say adding a background lower layer to the column, then you got it right. So let's quickly try to understand what's going on here. First, let's save this and let's go to the front end. If you try to imagine the HTML structure for this, the before pseudo element goes before the background layers. However, we want to make sure that that is displayed before the background layers area. That is why we had set z index value to negative 5, which is lower than the z index assigned to the background layers, which is negative 1. Think of it like we are stacking these elements inside the columns, where the gradient background pseudo element is in the bottom, then above it is the background layers, and on top of the background layers are the builder elements. So now that we have our gradient border to our column, the last part would be to add a skewing effect to it, which is simply adding the transform and skew value, which takes two values for the x and y axis in degree. So that is transform skew. And let's say we're going to skew it 1.5 degree to the x-axis and 1.5 degree to the y-axis. And that's it. Our final step for the skewed gradient borders for this column. And another thing, we implemented this to one column, which is through the class interactive column. Let's say we'll want to add that class to another column. 
or the second one, which is the digital column. That looks all okay. But since we set the background gradient to interactive column, all of the columns where we set the interactive column class will have the same border color. That is because of this line. But what if you want other columns to have different colors? Do you need to write more codes for that? The answer is fortunately no. We can go to the actual column, then go to the element CSS option. Then we're gonna paste some codes to it. So let me quickly explain what this code does. So the $EL signifies that this would be for this column element. Then to increase the level of its specificity, we have to add a xcall class, which is the default class that gets added to the column. Then we're going to target the pseudo element before for this column, which is actually the same as this one. However, doing it this way will set the background image or any CSS codes you add to this block higher priority. And there you have it, a different color for this specific column since we are adding it to the element CSS and we wrote a more specific CSS selector for this one. So the CSS declarations inside it gets the highest priority overwriting the CSS codes that we have written in the content CSS. So if you want to add the same gradient border to other columns, all you have to do is make sure to assign the class interactive column. Then make sure you add a background lower layer to the column. And lastly, add the specific code block to the element CSS of the column so that you'll be able to change the border color. As usual, a link to the gist that contains the codes that are used in this tutorial will be posted in the description box below. So feel free to copy and modify the code to fit the design of your site. Thank you for watching and we look forward into bringing you more videos for this series. Till next time and have a good one.